What's up YouTube? Today we're doing something special. We are going to be modifying a John Deere 1025R suction tube to accommodate a temperature probe sensor. This sensor, this tube that we're modifying today is actually going to be on a fairly famous John Deere 1025R. It's, uh, he's known as Johnny X uh, with Tim out in Indiana, Tractor Time with Tim. We'll be out there in about a week's time uh, from the airing of this video to actually install it and uh, looking forward to spending some time with him and getting to see what uh, Johnny X is all about. So here's what the tube looks like after it's been modified. And this is actually the one on my tractor. And you'll see the suction tube starts down there and basically goes up and into the uh, good old hydraulic pump there. And here's your sensor. Let's go ahead and get started and hopefully we don't break anything. So these are the parts we're working with today. We've got the John Deere suction tube for the, uh, I think it's 2014 and above. 1025Rs, 1023Es, and uh, earlier, the, I think the 2013 and 2012s had a, a different model suction tube that actually was bolted onto the pump, whereas this one uses a rubber elbow. We have the NPT bung, and this is a 3 8 steel bung that uh, we're going to drill a hole in this and weld this on there. Uh, the previous one that I made, I, I did with um, a MIG welder, but my TIG welding skills have gotten a little bit better, so we're gonna be using the TIG welder and see if we don't make a big mess out of it or not. And finally, the parts that we have from the sending unit. These are all adapters. This is an eighth inch thick. And then here is an eighth inch to three eighths, I believe which is what we're going to end up using. And then this screws into that, that screws into there. As you can see, that screws into there. And then we have the sensor. And it's pretty straightforward, a relatively simple thing to do. See, I've already marked this up a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to move it down just a, just a touch on there. And if you notice, this is kind of the, the parallel to the to the, the transaxle right there. So with that, we want this just to be faced off just a touch over. All right, so to drill this, we're gonna go ahead and use a step bit. I did measure, and I wanna have a 3 8 inch hole, which goes down to this line here. And as you see, we are good to not go all the way through. Put a dimple in for a starting point. And I like right about there. Fluid always makes things so much easier to cut. And uh, let's see if we can't get this, get this started and done. Oh, we're still wandering. Go ahead and grab a little bitty bitty bit to get this started, make things easier. Tool. 
where that is, so I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't get that clamped. Tacked in place. Let's make things a little easier. I find it easier just to cut your filler so that you're not working with that big long rod. Here we go. Tacked in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it, see if you're happy with it. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and do a bead right along this bottom edge here and see if I can't get some thickness and fill that in a little bit so that I can actually bring the two of them together. So to provide a little more information as to what I'm doing here is I'm essentially adding filler onto the pipe itself, I'm not actually trying to bridge the gap at this point. I'm just trying to add fillers to make it thicker. What that'll do is that'll allow me to bridge the gap a little bit later a whole lot easier because the gap will be much smaller. Another cool thing to note, you'll hear a puff of gas before I get started right here. That little puff before the arc shows up is essentially called pre-flow. And what it is, it's a bit of gas to clear the area of any contaminants before the arc actually ignites, which results in a cleaner well. There's also post-flow, which you'll notice I'll hold the torch over the hot weld while it's cooling when the arc is no longer lit. And what that does is that allows it to cool to a reasonable temperature um, while preventing any contaminants from getting in the area and contaminating the weld. Q-tipped my torch. And we've Q-tipped our tungsten. So Q-tipping is when you dip your tungsten into the weld puddle or you touch your filler rod to the hot tungsten, effectively ruining the uh, sharp tip and messing up the ability to control the arc on the actual metal that you're welding. Right now I'm repositioning the workpiece so that I have a better angle and can get into it with a better control with the TIG torch and the filler rod. I think I got it. Yep. Did it again. Back to the tungsten grinder to fix that tip. Oh, 
while we're here, just going to cover a quick little safety thing. Um, after cutting this and drilling the hole, and before welding, I used a little bit of acetone and, and blew out the uh, the piece just to make sure that there wasn't any chemicals remaining from the, the cutting fluid on the metal itself. Um, one thing to be really aware of is brake clean. That is a terrible, terrible chemical to use when you're going to be welding because when mixed with superheated argon, it actually creates a terrible gas that will kill you. Um, so if you are ever welding and you're not sure that the material is clear or clean from any type of chemicals, definitely take some time to clean it off and ensure that there isn't any residual chemicals on there before you actually go and hit it with a very, very, very hot torch. Enjoy that little red light in the corner. Yep, still working out the details of our uh, welding camera behind the lens utility thing we made. So, I think it's safe to say. I'm not going to win any medals for beautiful welds, but I am very confident that that is a solid weld, and it's going to hold up very well. This thing's about a million degrees, so we're going to let it sit there and hang out, but uh, we are pretty much done with this guy. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of grinding at the top, and I'm going to clean up just the marks from the welds, but uh, otherwise, let's say that we, uh, we completed the task at hand. I've got one more of these to make. Uh, we're putting on Johnny X and uh, on regular Johnny. So, uh, see you guys in Indiana. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this or if you learned something or if you felt like laughing because of my absolutely terrible take skills, I certainly would appreciate a like and uh, subscribe if you uh, feel like seeing some more good content. Uh, I call it good. You guys might call it entertaining. I don't know. But thanks for watching regardless. We're, uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, always try to be the person that your dog thinks you are. Have a good one, everyone.